You know, in church, we only speak to singles and married. And so there are people in other categories that feel totally lost in our midst. In fact, when we pray, we only pray for the married and the youth, the singles that are about to be married. You know, church, we are, there is a lot of hypocrisy in the church. Amen. We don't want to pray or talk about the fact that we have people who probably have lost their marriage after trying and they are in that category of being a divorcee. There are those who have lost their spouse to death. Am I correct? Are they around or they are not? They are in our families. They are everywhere. A woman joined our church some years ago and she confessed to me and said, Pastor, I've been going from church to church because I didn't feel, I didn't feel at home. Every time they talk about married and single, I don't even know the one I am. I don't know my category. She said, I can't join the singles fellowship because I'll be meeting my children's age mate there. And here is a church. Every time it's about the married and the singles. Ladies and gentlemen, we have other categories. We have people who are in complicated situations. And we don't have the right to judge them. We don't have the right to what? We don't have the right to judge them. If you judge them, the Bible says, let him that thinketh he stand. Take heed, lest he fall. If you, because you are married, and everything is going on smoothly, you judge the divorcee. My prayer is that you will not go through what he or she has gone through. You didn't say amen. Quite a lot of people judge people that are, are in those kind of categories because they always believe it's their fault. Amen. Or most 90% of our books on marriage, they are addressed to those who are married. In fact, if you notice some of the messages of marriage, it's about the ideal marriages. Father, mother, children. It's not always like that. There are homes where father is a runaway. <laughs> you know, runaway father, he has run away. <laughs> so more, it's only mother and what? And the children. You want to tell me that's not a family? That's a family. There are places where it is madame that ran away. And it is father and the children. There are cases where it is so complicated that you cannot even tell which category. You have to create a category. But whatever category you are online or on site, I pray for you this morning. God will visit you. Amen. You are not saying Amen. So we started talking in the first service on what I tried to why many marriages, why many marriages are not working. We read from Proverbs chapter 3, verse 19 to 26. And we're going to quickly read it because of our time. Proverbs 3, 19 to 26. I'll read it from the easy. There's a transition they call easy. Everybody say easy. The Lord used wisdom to create the heart. What, what did God use to create the heart? Wisdom. He understood the right way to create the heavens. He used his knowledge to pour water from under the earth in the rivers and seas. He caused the cloud to send down rain. My child, so this message is for God's children. My child, always keep hold of wisdom. Always do what? Always do what? Keep hold of wisdom. And, of, and a good mind. Make sure that you keep them safe. You need wisdom to keep your marriage, your life, your relationship safe. He said, wisdom will give you strength in life. What will wisdom do? 
It will give you strength in life. You will enjoy life like a beautiful necklace that you wear. Do you want to enjoy life? You have to walk in wisdom. You have to walk in what? Wisdom. He said, you will be safe as you travel through life. What will keep you safe as you travel through life? Which wisdom? Academic wisdom? Worldly wisdom? God's wisdom. He said God's wisdom will help you in your journey through life. There will be no danger to make you fall down. He didn't say there will not be danger, but those dangers will not make you fall down. Say amen to that. When you, when you lie down to sleep, you will not be afraid. You are not saying amen. You will sleep well with peace in your mind. You will not be frightened of any trouble that might surprise you. Those are the unexpected. In marriage, there are unexpected. You try your best to build a good foundation, like we said in first service, but sometimes there are a few unexpected. The Bible says wisdom will help you, that even in the midst of unexpected, you will not be frightened. Trouble may destroy wicked people, but you will know that you are safe. The Lord, is one, the Lord is the one who will take care of you. He will protect you so that no danger can hurt you. If you are saying amen to God, let it be louder. Amen. In the first service, quickly, I told uh, them that many marriages are not working because sometimes there is fault in the foundation. So we talked about foundation. Never say foundation. And I said in the first service, according to statistics, 65% of marriage now start from online. Oh, but say online. People now meet their wives and husbands. 80%, I mean 65% meet online. Our children, the one we are giving back to now, those ones that are in school now, their generation, their own will be 90%. It's not, it's what, it's, that's what will happen. We have to get, see, we have to understand the time that we live. We live in a very strange time. Even though marriage is not a casual relationship, marriage is a covenant relationship, because of the kind of time we live, a, a covenant relationship sometimes starts online. A young boy, a young man, sees a fine young girl, she sees her post beautiful pictures all the time, even though the pictures are edited pictures, uh, filtered pictures, he falls in love gradually with these pictures. He starts making beautiful comments to catch her attention. Maybe she posted something that she copied from her WhatsApp broadcast every morning. It's not really her words. She's not that smart. <laughs> huh? No, I mean, look, she's not really that smart. But she, she, because every morning she gets so many broadcasts, so she takes the best out of them and puts it on her social media. So this guy is gradually falling in love with someone who is saying all these beautiful words. So he's making comments under all our posts. You are very smart. You are so intelligent. <laughs> it's not wrong for relationship to start anywhere. Relationship can start on social media. I'm not saying it's wrong. But I'm saying, even if it starts from a casual platform, it's not a casual relationship. It's a covenant relationship. If I come here as your pastor and tell you that, no, you can't start from Facebook, I'm deceiving myself. Huh? I have seen relationship marriages that started on social media in this church that worked. I've seen one or two that worked. I've not seen the one that has not worked in this church, but I know there are so many that are not working. You know why? Because that atmosphere is a casual atmosphere. And so if you're going to start anything serious from that atmosphere, you have to take it from that platform and become more serious. Marriage is a serious matter. I told us last Sunday the reason why marriages are not working like in the days of our parents. In our parents, marriage is work. You know why? We are not taking marriage serious. We are playing with marriage. It's like a casual thing to us. That's why I said in last Sunday, a young man would just call his friend and say, Mommy, I'm getting married tomorrow. I'm talking about the, among the whites. If you do it in Africa, 
you will hear the word of your life. Wa gboro le aye. You know if you try it. Aha. You can't try it. Mommy, I'm getting married tomorrow. She said, tomorrow where? Who? For Yimbo people. He's getting married though. I love him. I love her. If you try it here, it won't work. And I think it's good that it doesn't work here. Because marriage is a serious matter. So one of the problems that, that makes some marriage not to work is because there's a funda foundational problem. If you didn't, we're not in first service, please listen, watch first service message when you get home on our YouTube channels. Praise God. Another, now, before I leave that foundation, singles, when you are dating, talk about serious things. Talk about what? Talk about your fears. When you have dated a guy for one month or two months, sit him down or sit her down. Let's talk about our believers pretend a lot. Everything is faith. You have started seeing some fears. You have already seen some red flags. Discuss it. Don't be afraid that if I bring it up, I may lose him, I may lose her. Look, it's better to lose someone in courtship than to lose someone in marriage. What are our fears? When we were dating, I asked my wife one day, we came, I said, let's talk about our fears. She was shocked. I said, I'm a pastor, fine, but you've been dating me for a while. What are the things you are beginning to afraid? You have seen some things. No, we pretend like we're angels here. I mean, in the church. I said, what are the things when you think about marrying me makes you afraid? And I'll tell you my own too, because I have to. And she said, um, number one major fear is that she's, she didn't, she, uh, that by the time she marries me, will she still be able to do her business as a uh, year mission? Pastor's wife, pastor missus, you know that status? That she's afraid, I hope she will not now have to pack up a dream of building a business to now become the admission. I told her, my type of pastor is totally different. No, no wise man will close down a shop where money is coming in. <laughs> no smart man, except somebody who is, money is coming in from a direction, you now shut it down. He said, why? I said, because she's not my missus. Except if it's a legitimate business. So I told her that, in fact, I will support you. In fact, anytime I'm free, I will attend your events. Because that's a shop that is supplying money and reducing my stress. So will I now go and shut it down so that my stress can increase? Who does that? I wonder how. I wonder who does that. I told her, no, if that's your fear, it's not real. Why you should discuss your fear is because at that foundational level, let's take away the fear. And by the time we did that, it's like when you remove clothes on a masquerade. Fear is gone, Abby. Because it's a human being that is inside every masquerade. 